Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's episode, we're exploring a compelling and turbulent tale of a young family thrown into chaos by external influence and misunderstanding. A husband finds himself at the heart of unfounded accusations while trying to support his wife through her postpartum depression. He then faces the betrayal by a trusted friend and the ensuing fallout that tests their marriage and family life. How will this family fare amidst such turmoil? Stay tuned as we uncover the layers of this emotional saga. My wife and her best friend accused me of cheating then got mad when I didn't. I 30 male and my wife 28 female had a baby last December. It was a traumatic birth and my wife developed postpartum depression. While she was originally going to go back to work after the birth, she's been struggling enough that we decided to wait until our daughter was a year old and reassess. She has been going to therapy weekly. With my wife home full time, I've had to work increased hours. This is something we discussed prior to making this decision and she knew this from the start. A few weeks ago, my boss approached me about a project that would require a lot of overtime in a short amount of time. It would both be great financially and for my career. I talked to my wife about it and she agreed that I should say yes to my boss. For the four weeks I'd be working on this, my mother-in-law and her best friend, Karen, 28 female, name change would come help out with some of the duties that I typically do. Karen is a stay-at-home mom with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. She began coming over during the day and would watch the kids with my wife. Three weeks into the project, it became clear that we'd need a few more weeks to get it together. I went home that night and talked to my wife about it. She said she was okay with it, but got very cold in the days after. It wasn't unusual behavior over the past few months, so I didn't think much about it and tried not to take it personally. During the last week of the project, I got home one night and saw that Karen was still at the house. I didn't think much about it, said hi to her and my wife, and then went to go check on our daughter. Before I could get to her room, I heard Karen say something along the lines of, he doesn't even stop to greet you. Definitely a sign. I turned around and asked what it was a sign of. Immediately, my wife started crying and Karen started accusing me of having an affair. She told me that I must hate my wife because she has postpartum depression and am not attracted to her because she gained weight from the pregnancy. Neither of these things are true. I'm trying my best to help my wife through her postpartum depression while supporting our family. And I think she looks great how she is right now. She just hasn't wanted to have sex and I haven't pushed. Karen then demanded to see my phone. I told her no. She told me that's a sign that I'm guilty. I told my wife that I would let her see my phone if she wanted to. She nodded and something inside me broke. I guess it was the thought that she actually believed I was having an affair really got to me. And that she didn't trust me after everything we've been through. Well, she looked through the phone and there was no evidence. Karen started saying that I deleted the evidence. She started screaming and woke up our daughter, so I told her to get out of the house. Eventually, she left and I went to calm our daughter since my wife was still on the couch crying. When my daughter was asleep again, I sat down by my wife and tried to talk to her about what's been happening. She told me that she's been worried ever since I started working all the overtime. I told her that we talked about how good of an opportunity it was and she agreed to letting me take on this project. She said it was very suspicious to increase the length of the project. I told her that sometimes that happens, she wanted more evidence so I showed her messages and emails with timestamps from work and pay stubs showing the overtime. She said she believed me and was sorry for doubting me, it was just that Karen had been telling her that these were all signs that I was cheating. I asked her why she believed Karen more than me and why she didn't come to me with her concerns. She didn't have a real answer. It's been a couple weeks and the project is over. I actually scaled back and am trying to work a little less than I was before the project so I can spend more time with my wife and daughter. But I feel so burnt out trying to do everything and becoming resentful because in the back of my mind I know that my wife doesn't trust me. I ask myself what happens the next time I have a project or I have to run errands one day or if I have a business trip? Am I going to come back every time to accusations that I'm cheating? I've tried bringing it up a couple times, but my wife tells me it's not the time and that she's tired or sad. I try to be mindful of her feelings, but I wonder if that means that I can never have any of my own. I'm not sure what to do here. Any advice for how I can move forward? This is so scary. Cannot believe Karen could do that to destroy this home. We gotta say, OP, kick Karen out right now. Keep that woman away from your wife. She doesn't deserve to be called a friend. Maybe she just wants to brag about her detective skills by sniffing out affairs, then blabbing it to the wife. This reminded us of Lily, OP friend from the previous story about the husband with a crush on his student, but she was trying to get what's fair for OP, not wreck someone else's marriage like Karen did. Now for the wife, she's not the one to blame here. It seems like her depression and Karen constantly whispering doubts in her ear that's making her insecure. 
On top of that, his long overtime makes it tough for him to reassure her. No wonder she came up with many scenarios and began to lose her trust. That's probably why she checked his phone just wanting to feel secure, but Karen's comment just made it worse. Finally, OP seems pretty messed up after that whole affair accusation. We think couples therapy or even just family support might be a good idea, especially if his wife needs someone around when he's not at home. Now, what would you do if you were in OP situation? Let us know in the comments. Before that, we'll see some of the comments from the community. A Reddit user pointed out that, if you're constantly bombarded with a story, you eventually start to believe it or at least entertain the possibility regardless of how much you initially don't believe it. And this is for someone that is in a completely normal state of mind, not someone suffering from something like postpartum depression. Think of all the people believing conspiracy theories they started out with a small idea then kept finding information that enforced it and echo chambers that kept driving the point till they truly believed it was happening even when faced with clear proof it's not. Karen probably slowly started pointing things out and drawing wild conclusions and just slowly eroded your wife's confidence daily for weeks. Combine that with you probably not having much time to prove otherwise sooner or later that insecurity gets to people. I'd say make it clear that you need to talk about this in the next X time frame because it's not just going to go away and you need to move on from it as well. Another said, this sounds to me like Karen is projecting onto your already very vulnerable wife. I'm happy to hear your wife is already seeing a therapist and totally agree that couples counseling is important. But just so you know, your feelings are valid. You are pushing yourself too hard and stretching yourself too thin. It's okay to feel the way you do, but please make sure you address your feelings. Don't bury them because it's not the right time. It won't ever be the right time, which is where couples counseling can come in to help force the conversation. You sound like a wonderful husband and your wife sounds like she is pretty great too. And hopefully with some help, you'll be back to your new normal with your little family. Best of luck, man. A user was concerned about OP mentally. Why is no one mentioning OP mental health? Dude must be stressed as heck, handling the big project, having to worry about his wife's paranoia and having to provide for his family. I hope you have someone to talk to. Someone suggested. Wow. Karen should be crossed off the friend list immediately. Your wife is extremely unstable right now. The last thing she needs is someone putting lies into her head. Is there a way for the two of you to attend a couple of the therapy sessions together to get all of this discussed? It honestly doesn't seem like the one-time week session is sufficient for how bad her mental health may be. Is she on medication? You can't walk on eggshells and you can't put your job at risk by refusing work trips, etc. Four days later, OP returned to post his new update on the situation. Thank you to everyone for all of the advice and support on my previous post. I think a lot of you pointed out what should have been obvious, that I need to get a therapist and start looking after my own mental health. A couple people asked for an update, so I'm giving one, but it's not happy. That night, I approached my wife and told her that I was going to find a therapist. I didn't connect it to her accusations or anything, just said that I was having a tough time and needed therapy. She shrugged and told me to do whatever. Next day, I got home from work and our room and my home office were ripped apart. Things everywhere. Important papers scattered. I don't see her but our daughter's in her room crying. My wife left her alone. Her cell phone's off. I call my in-laws and a few friends, but no one's seen her. I'm starting to get worried and I call my mom to see if she can babysit while I go out and look for her. Before my mom can get home, my wife gets back Karen's driving. Karen doesn't come in. She hasn't been back in the house since I kicked her out because she was offended by my behavior, but my wife does. She's clearly upset, been crying. I ask what happened. I thought at first the house might have been robbed. She starts screaming at me that I'm being unfaithful and that the therapy is a front so I can meet my mistress. I tried to calm her down and tell her that's not true, but she came at me and she hit me. My nose is broken. She kind of realized what she did and sat down on the couch and went comatose, just stared at the wall. I went into my daughter's room and locked the door. Called my mom to tell her what happened. She was already on her way and my mother-in-law to ask her to come over and take care of my wife. I packed a bag for my daughter and when my mom got there, we left. My wife didn't even look up. We dropped my daughter off with my dad and then went to urgent care for my nose. I got blood all over my mom's new Subaru. My daughter and I are staying with my parents for a while and my wife's staying with hers. I am looking into getting a restraining order against Karen. My wife and I are separating. I love her, but I won't live with someone who hurts me and who could potentially hurt our daughter. I am not going forward with a divorce yet, with the hopes that my wife will get the treatment she needs and we can work things out. My in-laws told me that they're looking at inpatient treatment at a local hospital, but I also have everything well documented in case of an eventual custody battle. My heart's broken because I know this isn't my wife, this is a sickness in her mind. But I need to keep myself and our daughter safe and give her the space to recover. I'm hoping that this is the right decision. Thanks again, everyone.
After a few days, he then added a small message in his post. Thank you all for your feedback. I've talked to my parents after reading your comments and came to the conclusion that for my daughter's protection, I need to file a police report. I am headed to the station now. Let's see if there are any interesting comments under this post. Wow, from reading this in your previous post, it sounds like Karen deliberately got in your wife's ear in order to ruin your marriage. More than likely, her life is a shambles and she wanted your wife's to be in a shambles. For her to be with your wife and not have the baby is pathological. Good for you for having your child with you and for working to get Karen out of your life. She will not be happy until your marriage has been completely destroyed along with your wife. Karen is pathological. She most definitely isn't a friend. She did what she was accusing you of. She didn't care about your wife at all and caused this break. You are right to get yourself into counseling. You have a long road ahead of you. Keeping you and your daughter safe is your main concern. I am sorry this happened. Karen took advantage of your wife's vulnerability and planted her evil thoughts in your wife's head. Wow, there are no words for what she did other than evil and psychotic. The comment below wrote, I wonder what her endgame is. It seems like she is enjoying the show and will probably abandon OP wife when this freaking hits the fan. I am sorry this is happening to you, OP, and I am glad you have support systems close by. Someone guessed that Karen's projecting her own issue on OP family. Why does Karen come across as this really insecure a hole who nobody really likes? I'm completely willing to bet she was projecting her own insecurities onto OP wife, potentially taking a joke too far into obscurity. Who knows if OP wife started it by jokingly saying, oh, my hubby's out with his mistress, then Karen further enabled that thinking by connecting it to well-known soap opera tropes. After all, OP wife dealing with postpartum depression would be completely vulnerable to having a dangerously reckless, mentally unstable individual's nonsense enabling her already dangerously vulnerable mind. It seems like things haven't gotten any better since the last time. He followed the Reddit advice, but his wife's really going downhill. We're not sure what's triggering it, but depression seems to be spiraling. She lashes out, then goes completely numb, which was a clear sign that her condition has deteriorated. We can't help but wonder how Karen must feel about all this family drama. Despite the situation, OP remained calm, even after his nose was broken. His priority at that time was his wife and child's safety. However, this incident seemed to be the breaking point for their relationship. On one hand, there's their love, and on the other, there's the safety of their child. OP probably wanted to protect both, but he may not be able to do it alone. We were truly impressed by his cool head under pressure. So what do you think of OP approach in this case? Let's begin a new conversation in the comments below with others. Well then, let's move on to the last update of the story. This was uploaded five days after the last update. There's more context for this situation in my post history. My wife passed away early Monday morning, convinced by her friend Karen that I was having an affair that I did not have. She had a mental break, which resulted in my taking our infant daughter and staying with my parents for a while. She was with her parents, who planned on taking her to the hospital for inpatient treatment on Monday. On Sunday night, she came to my parents' house and demanded I give her our daughter. Because she had left her alone for several hours the last time she was responsible for her and had gotten physical with me, I refused. I offered to let her come in and spend time with her while my parents and I were present, but she didn't want to come in and wanted to take our daughter with her. She was upset, but left eventually. A few hours later, she drove her parents' car into a tree and died. The friend Karen came to see my daughter and me yesterday. After some tears, she told me that she was planning to speak at my wife's funeral. She had already cleared it with my in-laws, but was letting me know as a courtesy. I told her she would not be speaking at the funeral. We fought and she left after telling me that I was in a hole and not the only person who loved my wife. I talked to my in-laws who were adamant that Karen be allowed to speak. She and my wife have known each other since they were kids and my in-laws are close to her. We're all very fragile right now, and I fear that pushing this further would hurt my relationship with my in-laws, which I don't want. Still, the thought of seeing Karen up there at my wife's funeral makes me feel sick. I don't think I can stand to listen to her, knowing that she took joy in my wife's deteriorating mental health and picked up my wife, leaving my daughter home alone. That being said, I don't trust myself to make the best decisions right now. My mind's clouded by grief, guilt, and fear. My parents are split on what to do, and I don't have the energy to reach out to my friends. So I'm coming here again to ask for your advice. Thank you. Let's see if our commenters have anything to say from this update. My concern is that if Karen is given a platform to speak at the funeral, she will try to shift the blame for your wife's death onto you. She will call you the bastard that took his wife's reason to live. Giving someone manipulative a platform to be heard is one of the worst things you can do. My concern is that if you don't put a hard boundary here now, you will have this woman haunting your life and stalking your child for years. You need to have a conversation with your in-laws. Air every single detail. Contact a lawyer to see if an order of protection can be granted to you and your child so that Karen cannot be allowed to see either of you. 
If you don't do it now, one day she could try and steal your child and your in-laws might try to help her. A person asked if people will know the result after OP deleted their posts and account. Do they know what went down? OP replied. They do to an extent. They know she accused me of an affair and was with my wife while our daughter was alone. I don't think they understand the extent it went on. They said that they don't really want to hear anything about it, since they've already lost their daughter and don't want to lose Karen too. A viewer from Reddit suggested OP should saying this at the funeral. I would just tell them this woman ruined my marriage and her actions caused my wife's death and the loss of the mother of my child. I don't care what you want or what you think. I'm very sorry that your daughter died, but Karen's behavior led directly to it. She is not welcome at the funeral. She is certainly not going to speak at my wife's freaking funeral when she interferes with my family. And if you don't want to be there, that's your choice, but she will not be there and she will not speak. She was my wife first and I will decide. Further, if you want to continue a relationship with my child, you will commit in writing and with monitored visits that you will not have Karen anywhere near my child. And if you can't make that commitment or if I don't trust that you can, you will not have a relationship with my child. This was a tragedy that was avoidable and it was stoked on by this sick woman and I will not tolerate any further discussion. This isn't about your grief, this is about an injury. A crime that was committed against my wife and my family and I will not sit by to protect your feelings when you apparently care nothing about mine. Okay now, just man up even though everyone's fragile. There are more important things in my opinion than your relationship with your in-laws if they can't recognize what happened to you visited by Karen. She can't just come and tell you as a courtesy, and it isn't your in-law's funeral, it is yours, because you should be the one putting it on it, is your wife. And I would just ask your in-laws, you can make whatever decision that you want, but just understand that I was worried about hurting my relationship with you, but you should be more worried about hurting your relationship with me. I did not do anything wrong. This outsider came in, and instead of helping my wife hurt her and turned her into something that she never was, because I think it would be intolerable for you to have to go to a funeral and listen to this woman speak her crocodile bullcrap. And it would also be intolerable for you to not go to the funeral. So I would just tell your in-laws, this is very uncomfortable for me. And I don't really care about your relationship with Karen. That's your business, but not at my wife's funeral. I don't give a shit. You can argue, but you are making a decision, so tell me what your decision is for our future. Also hire a lawyer now to deal with custody because they are going to go after grandparents' rights and you need to make sure that you protect yourself and your child from them and Karen, this is not over. The story takes a tragic turn as the wife's sudden passing leaves a gaping hole in her family, especially for OP. It's no surprise she was desperate to see her kid again after all that manipulation and pain. As for Karen, she still has the gut to show up to OP after everything, and now she wants to speak at the funeral? For what? Does she want to rub salt in the wound or pretend she's innocent? On top of that, it's weird the wife's family is okay with Karen being there. Did they even find out what she did? Because if this isn't addressed, it's going to blow up again for this family. With no further updates, we can assume the story ends here. What do you think of this ending? Let us know in the comments. In conclusion, despite the unsatisfying ending, the story highlights the importance of empathy, love, and support from family members like OP and his mother. And remember, if you're going through something tough, don't be afraid to lean on your family and maybe even a therapist. Alright, this story was a bit of a bummer. To change the mood, we'll move on to the second story for today. My husband cheated, but he thinks he didn't cheat. Should I forgive him? My husband, 40 male, and I, 34 female, have been married for 13 years and have two kids. I want to say we were happy. We rarely fought. If we did, it wasn't anything. We couldn't talk it over and move on. Over the past week, I noticed my husband was being very cold and distant towards me and the kids. I know he can get moody, so I let him be until he gets over his mood. This time, he was acting differently than his usual moods. He was more secretive with his phone and going out when he's usually a homebody. Last night I went through his phone and saw he was messaging other women asking for pictures of them. And one conversation with another woman telling her that he just met with someone messed around with her not sex but that he wished it was her. He goes on to tell her that he's only with me and his wife out of convenience and pointing out everything that he hates about me and our life. I confronted him about it and he tried to deny it until I brought out his phone reading what he was telling this woman and what he had done with the other one. But to him, because he didn't actually have sex with her, he doesn't consider it cheating. He says it was only one time and he won't do it again. I know the typical response and that he's not going to keep messaging that other woman. He apologized, but it didn't sound like he meant it and felt like it was more because he got caught. I'm not sure what to do at this point. I'm heartbroken and I hate him, but should I forgive him? 
After a half day, OP added some information as a small update. We both depend on each other a lot financially. Like, I honestly wouldn't be able to afford anything without him. He has brought up the issues he has with me, such as my weight. I've had a few health scares where I gained weight. And no matter how much I diet, I can't seem to lose the weight. Obviously, the weight has caused other issues that he pointed out he hates. He also has some mental health issues himself, and I'm always trying to be supportive. She later updated the situation on her post. I messaged him earlier that I needed him to leave. He came home and packed a bag. Don't know where he's staying, but right now I don't care. He asked when I wanted him back. I told him when he figures out what he wants from our marriage to work on or separate and not drag me along for his convenience. That's all I have right now. I have started looking for a therapist in the meantime. After some time, this OP back and added another update on this post. I've been debating posting an update, but here goes. So he came back a few days after kicking him out. We had an extensive conversation on the whole situation. I didn't forgive him, but we decided to work and mend the relationship. We came up with a plan. If he gets in a mood, we talk it out versus giving each other and the kids silent treatment. Things were going well. We tried to date again and got to know each other again. He was making some good changes with everything. I went to another doctor and found out I had some issues that were contributing to my weight. With the help of my doctors and myself, I have been able to lose weight. I've been doing the hard work to get in shape for myself and not anyone else. So please don't think that I did any of this for him because it's not. I'm trying to boost my self-confidence to be myself again. So far, I've lost about 20 LBS and I'm about 15 LBS away from my goal, so I'm super happy about that. But down to what happened this week, he got in a mood again and is doing the silent treatment and not following what we agreed on. So at this point, I'm done with the relationship. I've started looking into divorce. Clearly, he doesn't respect me enough to follow through with what we agreed on to make this work. And frankly, I'm tired of it. As for finances, we will most likely need to sell the house and go our separate ways. I should point out I make more than he does, but with our income combined is how we were able to live where we do. It's going to be hard leaving my home, but I have to think of myself and my kids. Thank you all for your comments and support. Here are some highlighted comments we found under this post. He is disrespecting you, cheating, and not seeing you for who you are. Don't forgive him unless he really is reflective and changes things up. Also, you have been married for 13 years and you have kids together. How did you not have the conversation about what the both of you consider cheating? These are things important to discuss so you can talk about what is nice for both of you. OP replied, we did have this conversation before we got married. I had a very toxic relationship before him, and he knew where I stood on cheating. He had agreed at that time what cheating meant. A user on Reddit voiced their thoughts. Why would you forgive a man that cheats, speaks badly about you, and doesn't care that he cheated? He sounds awful. I'm so, so sorry you're going through this. After that, a comment appeared and advised OP. No, you shouldn't forgive him. Tell him you and the girls are going out and you're going to do things with another man, but don't worry, you won't have sex with them, so it's not cheating. Please just kick him out. OP said, I did kick him out. Did he leave? No. This user then suggested, speak to a lawyer and file. Don't sleep in the bed with him. Don't cook his dinner or do his laundry. And please, after you spoke to the lawyer, book an appointment with a doctor for sexually transmitted disease test. The only conversation you should have with him from now on is, are you still here? I want you to leave no matter what the conversation is he is trying to keep replying with that. Have a friend come over and stay in the marital bed with you so he can't, or pack you and kids up and go to family for a week or two while you file. Either way, shut him out and divorce. We would like to congratulate OP. It's clear that her husband doesn't value her at all. Not only did he cheat on OP, but insulting her on top of that. Totally unforgivable. It's great to hear that she finally filed for divorce and that she's taking steps to improve herself. In the end, the decision to divorce was up to yourselves, and if it means a happier life for you and your kid, then it was absolutely the right call. Well, hope we brought you an amazing roller coaster of emotions. What did you think of this story? Did it spark any questions or discussions? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're looking for more stories like these, be sure to support us by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Let's continue to delve into all sorts of Reddit threads. Please take care of yourselves and the one you love, and we will see you next time on my channel.